It's only that we are suffering. But it does not mean that God cannot accept us. Mm. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. They knew this one thing. It is on the fact that we have leprosy. But little did they know they can be the saviors of the whole nation. And the Bible says, these guys, they have been sent out there to stay there. What were they doing there? They were outcasts from the Jews. They were not allowed in the congregation. And the Bible says nobody considered them. But they said one to another. Praise the name of the Lord. You know the Bible says one can send away a thousand, but two can send to flight ten thousand. And these people, they say one to another. Why are we staying here? And you know, brethren, I want to challenge you this morning. The issues that faces you, has it ever hit that situation where you are tired of it and you ask yourself that question, why should I sit here? Why should I continue to, to weep over this issue? And these people say, what to now? Is it right? I want to believe that they were asking themselves hard questions. Why should we sit here until we die? Because if we sit here, the fact is, we will die. When we go to the city, the Bible says that the city had been taken safe. Safe means it was surrounded and nobody could go out and nobody could come in. The fact that there was no food in Israel does not mean there was no food outside Israel. The fact that there was no food in Samaria, outside the gates of Samaria, people were eating and drinking. But inside the camp of the Israelites, there was no food. Inside the camp, they are eating their sons. But outside the gate of Samaria, they are men making. They are eating and they are drinking. Praise the name of the Lord. They had to break that cocoon where they were in. So they can go to the next level where there are blessings. The fact that you are not blessed now does not mean that, that, that in the out of God there are no blessings. The fact that you are shortened now does not mean that in the strong house of God there is nothing. Praise the name of the Lord. And these people asked one to another, why should we sit here until we die? You know, if you are not fed up with the situation, every day you will wake up a bit. It is like the children, you know, some of us, we will prefer to die smoothly, to die softly. It's like the children of Israel. God has taken them over, I mean not over, but out of Egypt. They have crossed River Jordan and they have looked back and we have seen their enemies being swallowed by the waters coming together on the Red Sea. But when you go to the other side and they see these people come, but they don't cross. They were just at the river beds of the river of the Red Sea. But we have seen God delivering them. How did God deliver them? The Bible says in the book of Numbers that the Israelites left Egypt when the, the Egyptians were busy burning their deads. Why? The final blow, the final plague, God had caused death in every household of Egypt. The festival. And the Bible says that God took them out with a mighty end. And they left when the Egyptians were busy burying their deaths. But even after that, they come at the river at the Red Sea. And they tell Moses, is it because there were no graves that you brought us here to be killed by the Egyptians? Some of us, we are like the Egyptians, the Israelites. We don't want to die. We don't want to be disturbed. We don't want to fight for our rights. God will give you nothing for free. But anything that you want, you get it down on your knees in prayer. There is nothing we will get in the kingdom for free. Let me tell you, the devil is not a respecter of age. You may say you are just students, but let me tell you, it is the time you are sowing the seeds for your generations now. And there is nothing that will come to your life on a silver platter. It is time you went down to your knees and you took that belongs to you by force. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The Israelites said, why do we leave Egypt? We could have died 
there softly. They don't want to fight for it. They just want it to happen. And then the four guys who were suffering from leprosy, they said, we don't need to be like that. Why should we stay here until we die? We need to take a step of faith and go. Because when we stay here, we will die. And when we go to the city, we have options. One option is they can kill us. The second option is they can spare us. If they kill us, better for us because even here we will die. But when we go there, they may have pity on us and we will leave. And I want to challenge somebody this morning. Is it good for you to rest, to sleep from evening to morning with that issue in your life, with your background running against your back, with all sorts of problems, and you are doing nothing about them? Praise the name of the Lord. Is it right for you as a child of God? But that the devil will bring you down every day. That the devil will cause all kinds of problems in your life. It might be your background. It might be your family. It might be your academics. It might be everything. That is causing you not to attain your destiny. But unless you reach that point and you ask yourself, is it worth it that you may, I may stay like this? Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You know, unless that thing comes out of your mouth, unless it comes out of your, your heart, that you will say, I am fed up of it. I'm going to fight for it. Then until then, it will be a problem in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says that when they entered the city, when they took a step of faith and they entered the city, the Bible says they found that there was no more. First five, just be very clear. I want to believe that they went with a lot of fear that we can die or we can live. But the Bible says that immediately they took the step of faith. God amplified their steps. And the king of the Arabians said, We have hired Hamid to come and finish us. And by the time when they reached there, they found there was no man. But as they said, they found there was no man. In other words, what they are fearing is already afraid of them. What they are afraid of. It is already afraid of them. But they are eating their sons. But the remnant they are afraid of, they are already afraid of them. But inside they are eating their sons. And they are eating what is forbidden. But outside the gate, the people they are afraid of, they cannot condemn them. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The Bible says that, they, that their God amplified their steps until. And you know what? If you have to reach that point, which point? Why you say like this, dear one? What do they say? They say, therefore, let us go. Mm. Therefore, is that conjun is that the middle conjunctions or what? It is a word to go. that comes at the, at, the, at the conclusion of the matter. After discussing with their mind, after talking it with their heart. After consulting with one another, after sitting down and being afraid and being tired of this, they say, Therefore, let us go. But as present, brethren, unless it reach that point where you say, Therefore, the conclusion of the matter is, Therefore, let us go. <coughs> How did God save these people? God said to these people, when they took the step of faith, God amplified their steps. But unless they presented their steps to God to amplify, God had nothing to do to save them. But as first time, God only intervened. And that point where they, they took the step of faith. Jesus teaching the disciples, he said, you don't need to have a very big faith. But you need to have that small faith at the mustard seed. Because when you have that faith, the small as it is, you can tell this mountain to move from this point and be planted to the other side. And that mountain will obey. We need that faith. How will that faith?
faith come. It will come when you say, there, let me go. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. God presented or amplified their steps when these young people presented God steps to him. God did something. Some of us, the enemy will flee tomorrow. Others will flee today, fly to flee today. Others will never fly. Why? Because we will never take our steps. It will only go away the time we will take our steps. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. If we take the step today, God will go with us. But if we don't do anything, then God will do nothing. We don't have to be so big. Neither do we have to make scary noises. But we only need to have the faith at the moment of the master said. And then God will come our way. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. That will only come when you reach that point and you say, I am tired of what is going through my life. I am tired of this thing pinning me down. I am tired of this thing being a problem to me every day. I was telling the ministry member in the sun, Sunday, when Leah, not Leah but Rachel, was tired of being buried, mm -hmm. she confronted her husband, Jacob, in Genesis chapter number 31, 30 and verse 1, and he told him, give me children now or I die. Unless it reaches that point in your life, doesn't matter how many prayers we pray for you. Doesn't matter how many hands we will lay on you. Doesn't matter how many CEO meetings you will attend. Doesn't matter whether you are 30 or 55 years in church. But unless it resonates out of your heart and you say enough is enough, then the Lord will come your way. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. It doesn't reach that point where you say enough is enough. Let I want to see the intervention of the Lord in this situation. And this guy said, therefore, let us go. And they came to challenge you and put some fire in your faith this morning. That's no matter what it is that has been that has worked against you for many years. Doesn't no matter what it has been. Maybe at some point you want to meet each others. But let me tell you something. The best you can become out of imitating others is the photocopy of that person. But God has called all of us the way we are. Let me tell you something. God, in the history of the Bible, God has worked with empty people to make them great. God has worked with empty people to make them great in the history. But sometimes we are full of ourselves such that God has no place in our lives. We are so full of ourselves. We are so full of how things cannot work. We are so full of what cannot happen. And not we don't give God space to work it in our lives. We want to be this is how I am. This is how it has been in my family. This is how I was brought up. This is how my mother did it. This is how my family has been. But I believe you, the best you can become, you can become out of imitating anybody, is a copy of the same. But God has called you the way you are to make you great in your own ways. One expression. When God wanted to save the children of Israel, during the time of Mordecai. There were great people in the land, the time of reign of Esther. But God did not go for them. He went for a very humble guy, Esther. And through Esther, he saved the children of Israel. He overturned the decree of killing the Israelites by Ammon. What could he be abused as a stronger man in the palace? He used the girl of a watchman Mordecai. The girl is Esther to bring deliverance to the land of Israel. 
and overturned the decree of hanging all the, Jew the Jewish by arm. Sometimes we are full of ourselves. When God wants to deliver the Israelites from the Philistines, he uses Gideon, the least from the least family. That he may show his greatness through him. Doesn't no matter where you are coming from. But God is willing to walk with you if you will present your faith to him. Only when you say, enough is enough. What is present? God calls Moses. And Moses tells him, I am not able to speak. But God tells him, I cannot throw you away because I know you can believe in me. But what I'm going to do is choose for you an interpret or somebody to speak on your behalf called Aaron. Praise the name of the Lord. Why? God works with empty people. God works with people who have a room for him. Not those people who are full of themselves. When we are full of ourselves, we deny God an opportunity to change our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. We have no place for him. And when we have no place for him, we miss God in our lives. Why? We have a formula. We have fixed our mind on how God can work. And because of that, we miss out God. The Israelites could have missed God during this time. Why it not for the four people suffering from leprosy who say, let us go. Because the, the Israelites were looking for a army to confront the Arabians. But God chooses to use the least, the man suffering from a leprosy, those who are already outcast. God chooses to ignore the commanders of the army. And then he went for the person suffering from leprosy because he had faith in him. Praise the name of the Lord. He leaves out the commanders of the army. He leaves out the experienced army men inside the camp. But he uses the man suffering from leprosy to bring deliverance to the land of Israel. God will work with our faith. God does not work with our state. God does not work with where we come from. God does not work with those people who know mathematics and chemistry. It is irrelevant. It is good for us now. But chemistry and the faith, we are not combating. But chemistry is very important. Praise the name of the Lord. God uses us when we go to him broken hearted and we tell God, like the king said, God unless you help me, nowhere else will our faith come from. Praise the name of the Lord. Unless you intervene, where else will I get my help from? Don't imitate other people. Be yourself. David tried it. God appointed David to kill Goliath. And God not tell David to use the army used by Saul, the king. But when he reached where the Saul was, Saul told the soldiers, take this garment of war, place them on David, on David. Let him put on the whole arm. Let him have the spear. And let him have the arrows. Let him have the breast place in place. And let him go and fight Goliath. But you know what? When Goliath put those things, he realized they were so heavy for him. But God had told him, I will use you. But Saul did not have any other way of killing Goliath apart from having the bows and the power and everything else in place. There was no other way, according to Saul, to confront Goliath. That was his mind. But in the mind of God, a small, smooth stone was enough to bring down Goliath. According to, according to the to your thinking, you needed bows and arrows to bring down Goliath. But in the ways of God, you needed a small, smooth stone to bring down Goliath. When you meet other people, you miss out on God. When you meet other people, jealousy comes your way. And then you throw out God in your life. When you say, I was not born from such a family. When you say, why am I from this family? Why am I like this? Why am I friends like this and I am not like them? When you think like that, you lock God out of your life. But when you say, the way I am, God can use me. The way I am, God, I come to you. 
praise the name of the Lord. Amen. When you think like that, then you see God in your life. It doesn't matter what is not happening or what is happening in your life. God could have used a fluent speaking Aaron to bring Israelites from Egypt. But he gave him one responsibility to speak on behalf of Moses. He was not allowed to speak. He was to speak on behalf of Moses. Why could if God say, I'm wasting my time interpreting for somebody? How will go? That is not how God works. God works with the heart of a man. God will work with the heart of a man. And a heart that is broken before God will be exalted by him. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Bible says that there was no other man in the land who was as humble as Moses. Even, even though he could not speak well, but in his heart there was love for God. He could not speak fluently, but at the depth of his heart lied the love for God. Amen. What lies in your heart this morning? Don't let problems create character in your life. Sometimes we let problems to create character in our lives. And when those characters are built in our lives, they are built against God. We miss out God. But I came this morning with a simple message. That no matter what is happening in your life, there is a better future for you tomorrow. Amen. And I want to agree with the servant of God, God Mika. Not, not Mika, but uh, in the book of Mika, chapter number 7, verse 8. The writer said like this, do not ridicule me, or do not laugh at me, my enemies. Because even if I am down today, I will rise up again. Micah chapter number 7 and verse 8. The servant of God is, is writing during a very difficult time in the land of Israel. And he says, Do not love at me, my enemies. Even if I am downtrodden, it does not mean this is my permanent place. I will rise up. Even if I am crying today, crying is not part of me. Tomorrow I will love. And I want to tell somebody this morning, you don't need to let issues of life, you don't need to let circumstances in your life <coughs> to build the character in you. You can say like this servant of God, even if I am down now, 